as lovable as... It's me, Ghost Cube, and today I am combining Poppy Playtime characters with classic 1980s cartoons. Even though I'm notorious in my friend group for having a big fear of puppets and was viscerally uncomfortable while playing Poppy Playtime. Oh no! <laughs> no! No! I became really inspired by the game and its lore, and thought it would be a lot of fun to create a fake animation cell that could exist within the world of the game. Today, we are drawing Huggy Wuggy, the big bad blue boy everyone's been talking about and fleeing in horror from. Since Huggy Wuggy was canonically made by Playtime Co. in 1984, I took a lot of influence from 1980s cartoons based on toy franchises, such as Care Bears, My Little Pony, and Strawberry Shortcake. I wanted to make this piece bright and colorful. As if Playtime Co. created their very own Saturday morning cartoons to promote their toys. Before the digital age, most traditional cartoons were created using animation cells. Something that was accomplished by taking transparent cellulose acetate sheets and hand coloring each frame with thick paint, usually acrylic or gouache. Cells would then be placed on a painted background to create an animation. For this piece, I wanted to lean into the flat 80s animation style, and mainly tried to ignore my usual way of drawing and attempt to make things look as stylistically accurate to 1980s Western animation as possible. I also didn't want to worry about the quality of the character drawing too much, because most of the old 1980s cartoons based on toy franchises were mainly a cash grab, and it wasn't uncommon for animators to go off-model or disregard appealing character frames in general. I also wanted to add in the pink version of Huggy Wuggy. I don't think there's an official name for her just yet, but I do know many people refer to her as Kissy Missy or Lovey Dovey. I think her arms were probably the most difficult thing to draw. I know I wanted her to have a more awestruck and smitten pose, and couldn't stop myself from drawing her gangly arms twisting around each other. It was something I also attempted to draw in my old Spinel fan art, and completely forgot how much I regretted it. I will never try to draw twisty limbs ever again. Back to the art, I used my standard pen for my line art. It's the Tech Pen Clean from the Comics Max Pack. Anyways, I love this brush. It's smooth and has a nice range of line thickness and pressure sensitivity, so I felt like it would look most accurate to a traditionally inked cell, rather than coming off as digital or artificial. While inking, I also realized that most 80s cartoons have a very thin line art. So instead of using my default brush size of 13, I lowered it to about a size 5. I know, I know, some of you animation fans may be thinking, Hey, Ghost, why are you shading this image? Didn't cheap 80s animations usually only have flat colors? And to that, I say, yeah, but the perfectionist in me physically cannot leave flats alone. I have to shade my drawings or else I cannot sleep at night. I used an orange color as the base of my shading layer because I wanted this piece to have friendly, warm tones. I usually use a blue or violet multiply layer to shade my flats, so it was fun to play around with different cell shading colors. To achieve the cell animation look, I added a few effects. First, I used this little trick I learned from Jacob Andrews on Drawfee. So the finishing touch thing that I think is kind of fun for like anime inspired things is if you copy all of your color layers and then like merge them and put them on top of your line art and then put a blur on it and then lower the opacity, it gives it this like animation cell sort of look where yeah. it's like there's a slight halo glow blur to it that's not super noticeable, but it gives kind of a feel. I followed what Jacob said, but I also slightly moved the duplicate flat color layer to the right to add a little bit more dimension. I also added a slight Gaussian blur to the line art as well, just to push that cell animation effect just a bit further, and I think it adds to the feel of an old 1980s animation. 
I also added a shadow underneath the flat color layer since cells lay on top of the background and can cast a faint shadow. I avoided using straight black for the line art and shadows for this piece and went for a darker brown instead because brown is a bit softer and adds more of a vintage feel to the overall image. I also tinted the whites of the image to a more yellowish tone for the same reason. The background was also something I was dreading, mainly because I did not think it through. You mean you haven't thought this through? I liked the idea of Huggy Wuggy and Kissy Missy being outside because the last thing I wanted to do was worry about furniture perspective. The main struggle here was that the background paintings for animations can be pretty detailed and painterly. And painting is not my strong suit. You have a strong suit? My biggest fear was creating a background that was too low effort or rendered incorrectly and would make the overall piece look incohesive and disruptive. I tried to stray away from Procreate's organic brushes because I didn't want to over-render the background or have anything too complex, but after struggling with how to draw grass for 15 minutes, I gave up. I tried to keep it mainly as an embellishment rather than making it a texture for the whole ground just to avoid it from being too distracting. I added in those horizontal lines on top of the image to create a slight scan line effect to make it feel like we're seeing the image on an old VHS screen. I kept the opacity pretty low to make it a more subtle effect and not distract from the overall image. I also added in some chromatic aberrations to amplify the VHS feel, as well as noise to add some texture and grit to the piece and envelop everything in a static effect. These are standard filters in Procreate, but this effect can be simulated in other programs as well. And with that, we have our fake VHS art of Playtime Co.'s most successful toy. I wasn't too confident in this piece until I finished the background and started pulling everything together, and it was a lot of fun to get out of my comfort zone and create something that could exist in a fictional universe. I hope this was fun. I don't usually make tutorials or get to rant about my love of animation history, but I would love to continue making more videos like this. I already have some ideas on how to make more fake animation frames of other Poppy Playtime characters, as well as characters from other horror games. Please be sure to do all the do's and like, comment, and subscribe. It does mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Sweet dreams.